in your materials is my standard regular written report to you all. It uh, uh, chronicles the activities that occurred between uh, the prior meeting in November uh, and where we are today. And even though that was a short window of time, uh, it has updates on the advisory groups, the offices, and the education activities that were occurring. Uh, and even in that small short window, uh, 13 of your advisory groups had convened to continue the work that uh, you direct to them. And we had more than a dozen live education programs held in that window in time. Um, I'd like to draw out some additional elements from the written report to share with you, uh, as well as uh, pull some other items that aren't necessarily in that report uh, and provide some information to you, both in terms of your awareness and some of the action items that will be before you uh, today. I'd like to cover first the year in review which is a new kind of thing that we started to post out there and give you some details, followed by a brief update on court construction, followed by some of the consent agenda items that are gonna be before you in a very short time, as well as then an update of the legislative activity, which is already quickly and rapidly underway coming off the transition. And uh, as I usually quip, uh, no meeting could ever be complete without some kind of discussion about the state budget and our budget in that particular context, uh, and then close my remarks with you this morning in that vein. Uh, first of all, in terms of a year review, because we have completed this calendar year of 2018, um, we have generated a report that kind of recaps uh, the activity of our councils. It's something that we started more informally internally, uh, but are now sharing it branch wide and posting it on our public website. And we have done that uh, in December, just last month. The review highlights a lot of the progress and issues and challenges that have been spearheaded by the council uh, and the administration issues across many areas, obviously pretrial reform being one of those, language access being another, civics education, uh, and that's not an exhausted list. We have a section that we call by the numbers. Uh, which uh, has examples of some of the service that we either provide directly or indirectly uh, to folks. And it includes a couple of things that I'd like to just give you a couple of examples of what we mean by, by the numbers. Uh, one is the 17 million visits to our online self-help center which actually represents about 38% of all of the total traffic that goes to the California Courts website. Another interesting number is the 243,000 now, which is quite an increase of the number of juror payment checks that are issued by the council on behalf of all of the 58 trial courts. Uh, and then we entertained uh, and grappled with and managed almost 900 uh, public access to administrative records requests under Rule 10500, uh, another volume that continues to increase uh, as the public uh, and interested parties seek more and more information about our activities. But the complete review is out there and available. Uh, and it really sets the context for the broad scope of work that's ongoing that we do to benefit all of the people of California. Uh, with respect to court construction, we again are off to a very rapid start. Uh, the report references the good start that we're underway. We have awarded uh, four construction management uh, contracts uh, in uh, the short amount of time between uh, uh, the last meeting and now. Those projects uh, that are being enabled are in the superior courts uh, in uh, the cities of Wairica, uh, one in uh, Sonora, uh, one in Shasta, uh, and one in El Centro. Uh, and those are proceeding on schedule, at least for now, even though it's early in 2019. Uh, the Shasta community, no doubt, is very excited about this development uh, based on the report that you heard yesterday. Uh, they could kind of use a boost uh, and something to rally to. And so this construction project is a very nice one and very important to that community. And we're happy to be on target and on progress for them so far for this particular year. With respect to the consent uh, agenda that's before you, there are several budget-related items on there for today's meeting, uh, and you're being asked to consider those. The f one of them is to consider the allocation adjustments related to the 1% cap on trial court fund balances and the Equal Access Fund uh, and Civil Council and Dependency Programs. Uh, specifically, you're being asked to approve a new workload-based funding allocation methodology for what we call AB 1058, which is child support commissioner work, uh, and to maintain the current methodology 
for the Family Law Facilitator Program until fiscal year 2022 uh, to ensure that new workload information can be captured and incorporated into the existing model. These recommendations come to you by the Funding uh, Allocation Joint Subcommittee that was appointed to reconsider allocation methodologies that were developed for both of those programs. But those methodologies, I understand, go back two decades, almost to 1997, so a refresh of those is certainly in order given where we are. Finally, on the consent agenda, there's a report and recommendations from the Trial Court Budget Advisory Committee to adopt now on an ongoing basis changes to the court-appointed Dependency Council funding methodology to address the unique circumstances uh, in our smaller uh, rural court settings. Uh, this is particularly important because the governor's inclusion of $20 million in funding for Dependency Council is proposed in the budget for the upcoming fiscal year. Uh, it's certainly welcome, and though we can't take anything for granted at this stage, it's cause for optimism for us uh, uh, starting to understand and see this particular administration's approach uh, to the important work and needs that are unmet in that area. Next, legislative activity. Uh, I should mention some things there that are new to uh, those restart of a two-year session for 2019 and 2020. The chief noted all the swearing-in ceremonies that she officiated between the both houses. Uh, and just again, by some of the numbers, there are 17 freshmen, brand new legislators uh, among this 120. Four senators uh, who previously served in the assembly have moved on into the Senate. Uh, and, and as always, I know it's of interest to note for uh, our judicial branch family, the composition of members with legal backgrounds. Uh, and of the 17 new freshman legislators that I mentioned, four of them uh, have law degrees. The legislature has already reconvened for its regular business on January 7th, and they have already introduced about 200 bills for this session. Our governmental affairs office tracks all of those bills and is currently tracking 40 of those court bills that they tab as court related. These are ranging from uh, pretrial release risk assessment tools, gun violence restraining orders, human trafficking, and funding for six new superior court judgeships. Uh, in terms of the leadership and the assignments, some of those are out. Uh, in fact, most, if not all, are out uh, from the speaker as well as the pro tem. Uh, and notable for us is that Senator Jackson will continue uh, as the chair of the Judiciary Committee as well as a member of the Judicial Council. Senator Holly Mitchell will continue as the Budget Committee chair on the Senate side. And on the Assembly side, Assembly members Stone and Ting will each continue in their roles respectively as chairs of the Assembly Judiciary Committee uh, and chair of the Assembly uh, Budget Committee. Uh, committee, which is a nice uh, segue to uh, the last subject, which is our budget. And finally, uh, as we go to this, the chief mentioned noted yesterday, we've got a pretty good start on this budget process for the upcoming year and new money for key programs. Uh, the Jan 10 proposal is out. Uh, it concludes nine months of work uh, from a number of folks that I would like to thank, and I won't name it all because I will no doubt leave people out, but a um, uh, uh, heartfelt thank you uh, to the uh, hard work that goes into this nine-month cycle to the Judicial Council itself, its lower committees in the form of the Judicial Budget Branch Committee, the Trial Court Budget Advisory Committee. Uh, they are then formed by other committees also, the Criminal Law Advisory Committee, the Facilities Committee Group, the FAM Juve Group, um, the Futures Commission work groups that are out there are all bundled up into all of this. Uh, uh, my thanks to the, to the chief herself, as well as our uh, key staff members, uh, Millicent, uh, John, Rob, Zlatko, Lucy, and again, this is where I start to leave people out and forget about them. Uh, but they, in turn, have to make their own thank yous downstream for all of them being available around the clock, especially in November, December, uh, when this really starts to accelerate, uh, particularly in this year in a transition. So in, in brief, though, the proposal is $327 million in new general fund dollars. Uh, and it reflects a mix of the new governor's priorities as well as the priorities of the council and the judicial branch. Um, the details are in print, and it's on our website, so I'm not going to cover and unpack all $327, uh, $20 million 
Uh, thank God it's more than 327. Um, uh, but those are available. Uh, as always, uh, some will see more positives in there. Uh, and of course, some people will see some negatives because there's some disappointments in there that certain things didn't funded. For those who experience disappointment, a reminder that it's not something to give up on. Uh, sometimes it can take one year, two years, three years to build into uh, some of these things to the point that they get to the position of timing of approval. So uh, even if there's some disappointment of what is not in there, uh, we will continue to work on those things that we've done in, in years past. Uh, some broad themes before concluding uh, is that it is there's a lot in there that connects with our what we call our collective uh, uh, goals of one, uh, a stable and sustainable uh, funding uh, uh, model. Uh, the backfilling policies for costs we can't control uh, remain intact with this particular administration, uh, and they've helped us address some of the insolvency in some of our other funds, and so we're very gratified to have those commitments from this new administration. Connects with our goal and agenda for modernizing uh, our operations in the form of case management systems and a lot of other pilot projects that we've got from the Futures Commission in terms of those priorities and those projects and how we've tried to organize and put uh, the public and the users at the center of the things that we do. And I think that this budget thematically connects with that objective that we've all been working on for really uh, multiple, multiple years. Uh, and then lastly, the chief mentioned this, a recognition that pretrial is changing and has or has already changed and continues to change in California. So there's not only an acknowledgement of that, uh, there's also substantial investment uh, in that regardless of what is occurring with respect to the referendum on uh, SB 10. So it does recognize the amount of change again over multiple years uh, and uh, expects uh, and invests in more change in, in that respect. I do want to emphasize that the governor's proposal, again, is just that, a proposal. So in terms of next steps, we'll be continuing to work with the new administration uh, and the legislature over the next several months as the process moves forward. Uh, we also have the opportunity later this morning to kind of focus on the broader budget environment. Uh, the new administration, the new governor, the new finance director, uh, Keeley Bosler, uh, allowed uh, one of their economists, Irina Asmundson, uh, to um, uh, uh, present and come to us and accept the invitation to to be part of uh, what it is the work that we're doing here uh, and again if the logistics and the schedules work together uh, she'll be introduced uh, and she can share her insights and her responses some of you remember she was here before uh, in 2016 or so but it'll help shape the perspective of the work that we are doing uh, go forward on a go forward basis and kind of connects with how we try to create again stability in the environment for the people who uh, need their priorities and their needs addressed by this branch. Uh, so thank you members again for getting us to this particular point uh, in the process. Obviously it's a year round endeavor. We'll continue to work on it. Uh, and thank you for your attention uh, this morning.